I decided that today I'd finally make a video of me making the focaccia bread because I think maybe if you follow along, you'll have an easier time making it yourself. I know you've done it before and I know you can. Just, you know, maybe this will be a good reminder for you. Things you're gonna need are your stand mixer, kettle, because you're gonna need hot water for proofing. You're gonna need a cast iron and a little tea cloth. And for ingredients, you're gonna need flour, a little bit of sugar, yeast, salt, olive oil, and whatever spices tickle your fancy. I think safe bet to do anything you can call a herb. Anything from the garden, you can chop up finely, and I always throw a little pepper in there for a little spice. Spice is a funny, funny way to put it, it's not spicy. Just, I don't know. Uh, garlic powder too, and onion powder if you have it, they're perfect. Other things you might need are measuring spoons, measuring cups, uh, butter knife, and a dough hook attachment for your stand mixer. I know, I know you have one. <laughs> and if you don't, you just need it by hand for the same amount of time. Uh, first step would be to unlock this guy. There should be a little latch on the side there. And grab our flour. And we're gonna need three and a third cups of flour. So you take your one cup, get your butter knife, you flatten it off, stick the flour in. One, two, three. One third. There we go. Three thirds. And then we can put the flour on for now. We'll move on to our sugar. We're going to need our measuring spoons. And I just put half a teaspoon in. Not half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon. Like... Oops, right in there. We're going to make it all in here. Move on to the salt. There's a bit more salt than sugar in this, so we're gonna have half a teaspoon. All right, plus full teaspoon, so one and a half teaspoons of salt. Oh, sometimes put a little extra because I like salt. <laughs> All right, and our last dry ingredient uh, that's not spices and herbs is yeast. And normally it says you need to use one packet of yeast, but to me that's two and one quarter teaspoons. So two, one teaspoons. We'll start with that. And who cares if you put a little extra in there? Two. And we'll find the quarter. And we'll get the quarter in there. Nice. Put this bad boy away. Get to clean as you go. Uh, and then I will immediately not do that. Put that over there. Next for dry, I'm gonna get our spices out in the front here. Or give me. Now, I also went out into the garden and I picked some rosemary. Uh, rosemary, sage, oregano, they're all great. And then I chopped them finely. I'll put that in right now. For the rest of the spices, I like to measure with my heart. So here's some pepper. Here's some lemon and herb mix that I realized the other day has dill in it, and I really like that. Some poultry seasoning, which is mostly sage. A little bit of that. Pretty important garlic powder. I love garlic. And uh, maybe even more rosemary, you get some dry rosemary. You can use dry, you can use fresh, it's all good. Kind of hydrates when you're making the dough and letting it proof. And lastly, Italian seasoning, which I think is mostly oregano. So oregano, sage, rosemary, garlic powder, those are really safe bets. Now, before we start getting the wet going, I'll put the dough hook on. Right, locks in. 
we're gonna take our one cup and our one third cup measure cup again. So we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna put the tap onto the hottest setting. We're gonna wait for it to warm up and we're gonna use hot water. The one cup warm hot water. And a third of a cup warm hot water. There we go. And the last thing we're gonna to need to put in there for now. It's olive oil. Make sure you have a good amount of it ready because this uses quite a bit of olive oil. So we're gonna use one tablespoon, maybe a little more. Two tablespoons. And a little splash of butter. We'll put this aside for now. Put your stand mixer down. You're gonna to wanna to lock it into place. And then on this side, there's a stirring setting. You can just put it on the lowest setting for about eight to 10 minutes. I choose, honestly, I'll say eight, and then I'll forget about it for two minutes extra and we'll go 10 minutes. Uh, but when you turn this on, it's a good time to turn your kettle on because you're gonna need hot water for the next step. And it'll be ready about the same time. So I'll see you again in eight minutes. So, time is up. We're going to turn the stirrer off. Kettle's done going. And what we're going to do next, you might want to get a, a mug out for, maybe like a little a food brush or a paper towel or hand, whatever you feel like. And a little scraper. What we're going to do is we're going to unlock it. As we turn it off, we're going to pull this guy up. And we might hinge the dough off. Get all the dough off there. There you go. As a matter of fact, let's get this guy out of the way. He's gone. We're gonna take this guy, brace it. We gotta pull the bowl off. Sometimes it takes a little portion adjustment. Nice. We're gonna take your spatula, maybe get stuck to the side a little bit. If you put a little extra liquid in there, it can be a little goopy. There you go. Take it out for now. You can be a goober like me and try and keep it in your hand while you do the rest. But what you're gonna to wanna to do, you can grab a plate, put it on a plate probably. What you're gonna to wanna to do next is take a little olive oil. Pour it right in. Take your brush. Kind of brush it all around, up all the sides. Because we're going to be putting this dough back in here. And we don't want it to stick to the side. If you're pulling it out, you know how sticky it is already. And you know the more olive oil, the tastier it'll be. Go. Take some brush down. Get this guy in my way. Done. And you can give it a nice feel. Texture, plop right in there. We're gonna get that dish towel that you always have lying around, everybody does, maybe, I don't know, or just anything to cover it. And we're gonna mostly cover it, maybe with a little hole. And we're gonna take it in the microwave. Put it in, like that. And then what we're gonna do is take the hot water we made. Next cup, no lemon in this water. We're going to use it, and the steam it puts off to proof our dough. And now what you're going to want to do is set a timer for an hour. You know, if you're using the microwave already, you can go timer an hour. That's actually one minute. Whatever. You're going to want to put the timer on for an hour. And come back. It'll have risen by then, and then we will do the next steps, which is kneading it and then letting it proof more and then covering it all well and then baking it, but you'll see. Oh, also, I'm gonna clean up uh, while that's happening because I can't just have a dirty kitchen all day. Uh, it's a good time to do it too. Uh, all we're gonna need left is cast iron, more of this bad boy. And we're back. 
It's been an hour and I fibbed a little bit. We're also gonna need some flour for this part. And we'll try the little paper towel method. So, we're bowl. Oh yeah, a rose, nice and good. Let's see. So we're gonna need the flour because we're gonna have to turn it out on the countertop. So you take, just take a little spoonful, sprinkle it about, make sure the counter's nice and clean. Where you get little crumblies. New bread. So here you go. All right, and all I do, just turn it over. You get a little oil, a little flour on the counter, whatever. Now the whole point of this is to just push it away from you once and pull it back. With push, pull, back, push, pull, and then that's it. And so what I do is I kind of try to cut my hands under it like this to make a ball. That's right. There we go. We're just trying to knock a bunch of the excess air air pockets. You know, big air pockets inside, and it makes weird. Maybe we'll just put some flour on top. Right. I'll take the bowl. And we'll and that's it. And now all we have to do is I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. And we're just gonna let it sit here on the bowl 10 minutes. Then we'll be back. So we're gonna put it in the cat butt. And that's 10 minutes. And so we take the bowl off and we'll set that aside for now. We'll get ready with our cast iron. So this bad boy is gone. But first we're gonna take our little piece of paper towel or our little blue brush and put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Doesn't have to be a ton, but enough. And we'll take our paper towel and just work it into the pan. Again, you don't want any greasing, you want good color on the bottom and side of your bread. There we go. work with our fingers towards the edges. So okay if you knock out some of the air bubbles, you want a nice shape of your bread. And we're gonna let it proof one more time uh, before we boil it and stick it in the oven. So what we're gonna also gonna have to do is find a tea towel, part two. We'll just drape it over top. And it's at this point, it's very important that you preheat your oven. So I'm gonna put it up to 450. Nice. So it's gonna get ready to bake. And because I know it takes exactly 15 minutes to preheat my oven, I just start it now. Uh, you can do it beforehand, because this needs to sit for 15 more minutes before the last step. And then we put it in the oven. I'll see you then. And final proof is done. It's been 15 minutes and I've just heard the oven beep for uh, for that it is nice and preheated. And we get to play with our dough. That's what we're gonna do. Put a nice healthy amount of olive oil just right on top. And then I'm gonna work it in. <laughs> and once I've gotten the whole top covered, I'm gonna start pushing little holes in it like this. And these little holes are gonna grab some more of the olive oil that I'm about to pour in. Go. Okay, and with my nice oily hand, I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> Just gonna go around like this, pour it on the top. This bread is not good for you. But one, oy muy bien, does it taste good? All right, so the pocket's full. I'm gonna open the oven, slide this bad boy in. Just like the last step, it's going to be 15 minutes, one pop. I'll see you when I take it out, or in about 12 minutes, I'll like, turn it around, we'll see. Get it evenly brown. All right, finally bread time. Turn the 
wiping off at this point. And you really don't want to put it right in your counter, so I put a tea towel down. And there it is. Uh, wait till it's done cooling, or don't. I normally risk hurting myself and flip it onto a wood cutting board like that. And it's all done. How nice that looks. I'm gonna burn myself looking at the bottom. And I always eat a little bit off the corner. Always, but I'm not going to because I want to get a nice shot for this. <laughs> uh, but I encourage you to do so. Oh man, I can't wait to eat this. All right. I'm going to take some vanity shots of it and then I'll, I'll get back to you. I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. The bread's just dense and beautiful and wonderful. And uh, I'll, I can eat a whole loaf in a night. <laughs> and uh, mom, I hope this motivates you to try it on your own because I, I believe in you. Freaking awesome. You got this. All right. Bye.